Hola amigos, feliz viernes. Hoy es viernes. Yo soy Rory y estoy contento de estar aquí contigo. We're starting a new series today and uh, one of our MMS alum, MMS is our Mastering Medical Spanish course. At the end of the course, you know, we do some like exit interviews, things like that. And she said, you know what, Rory, it would be great if you could provide us with some more women's health content. And she said, it would be a great video viernes series. And I said, yes, it would. But I know absolutely nothing about this, so I need your help. So we had a chance, we had some talks, and and uh, she, she was able to guide me a little bit with a handful of common topics that she sees in her women's health um, career and practice. And so here we go today with El Examen de Papa Nicolau, uh, pap smear test. Um, that's how you say it, Papa Nicolau. Now, I can't really guarantee you that's how you spell it, but that's how you say it. Okay, all right. So let's get started with anatomía y padecimientos. We'll start with, start with some anatomy and some problemas or symptoms kinds of things. So anatomía. Células anormales and normales. Células normales, normal cells. Células anormales, e abnormal cells. Cervix or cuello uterino. Cervix, cuello uterino. There are a few other words for um, cervix, but these are pretty common ones. Cervix, a little higher register. Cuello uterino, pretty, um, pretty commonly understood. Muslo, thigh. Ovario, ovary. Piernas, legs. Pies, feet. Rodillas, knees. Utero, uterus. Vagina, vagina. Okay? All right, bien. Y padecimientos, conditions or symptoms, kinds of things. So, cancer, cancer. Uh, infección, infection. Infección or enfermedad de transmisión sexual. So, there's kind of a move to say infección de transmisión sexual in English. It's a little behind in Spanish, and so it might be more common to hear enfermedad, disease, de en transmisión sexual. Okay? More commonly heard, more commonly understood. But infección, infection, enfermedad, disease, de transmisión sexual. Inflamación, inflammation, quiste, cyst, sangrado entre periodos, so bleeding between periods. Sangrado irregular, irregular bleeding. VPH, virus papiloma humano, so HPV, VPH. Okay, let's take a look at some herramientas y otro vocabulario. Not necessarily all tools, but maybe common items that you talk about within the consult room. So, herramientas, bata, not really a tool, but a gown, la bata, okay, la bata. Cepillo cervical, like a cervical brush, see? Eh, colposcopio, colposcopio, so the, uh, col um, the colposcopy, not the procedure, but the actual colposcope, excuse me, colposcope. Cureta, cureta, like a curette. Espatula, spatula, uh, especulo, speculum, mesa de exámenes, the exam table, okay? Reposapies, or estribos. People always ask me, how do you say stirrup? So we need to put, put your feet in the stirrups, that kind of thing. So estribos is the literal translation to stirrups. It's got all the same uses as stirrup does in English, you know, horses, exam tables, etc. Um, but reposapies might be super easy to use as well, like foot rest, reposa pies, okay? Bien. Otro vocabulario that could be relevante, cómodo or incómodo, comfortable or uncomfortable, flujo abundante, like really heavy flow, talking about periods, eh, flujo leve, like a light flow, uh, manchas entre periodos, so like spotting between periods, Eh, muestra de células. A muestra is a sample. So muestra de células would be a, a cell sample. Eh, sentir dolor. Feel pain. Sentir, oh, excuse me, regular and irregular, regular and irregular. Okay? Let's look at some useful verbs. So we're kind of building, right? Let's look at some useful verbs as you might start talking about pap tests. Uh, dejar las rodillas caer. So let your knees fall. Yeah? Examinarle, examine you. Insertar, to insert. Intentar, to try. Mover, to move. Eh, moverse is a good verb to like scoot. So if you have to tell your patient to like scoot down towards you, moverse is that good verb. Poner los pies en el reposapies. So put your feet in the foot rests. Eh, ponerse la ropa, put your clothes on. Quitarse la ropa, take your clothes off. 
Raspar célula. So raspar would be like to scratch or scrape uh, cells. Et recoger células, to like collect some cells. Relajar, relax. Respirar profundo, breathe deeply. Sacar una muestra, take a sample. Eh, sangrar, to bleed. Sentir dolor, to feel pain. Sentir presión, to feel pressure. Y ver de cerca, see very closely. Okay, see very closely. All right, so let's start talking about el Papa Nicolau. And uh, que es y para que es el Papa Nicolau? What is it and what is it for? Let's look at some phrases, some simple phrases, using some of this vocabulary to describe the purpose of the PAP. Okay, el examen de Papa Nicolau es un examen de detección. Examen de detección, like a screening test. Examen de detección de células anormales, of abnormal cells. En el cuello uterino, in the cervix, or cervix, okay? Estas células, these cells, anormales, these abnormal cells, pueden convertirse en células cancerosas. The, these can become uh, cancerous cells. Realizamos, now realizar in Spanish is to actually think of it as to do, okay? Realizamos el examen de Papa Nicolau. We do the pap para prevenir el cáncer del cuello uterino, to prevent uh, cervical cancer, okay? ¿Cómo es? Well, what's it like? What's the pap test like? Es un examen pélvico or ginecológico. So it's a pelvic exam or a gynecologic exam. Usted va a quitarse la ropa y ponerse esta bata. So you'll take off your clothes and put on this gown. Luego se sube a la mesa de exámenes. Then you'll get on the exam table. Y pone sus pies en los estribos. And you put your feet in the estribos. Estribos, or stirrups. What was the other word? Footrests, reposa pies. Mientras deja caer, while you let your knees fall hacia los lados, to the side. While you let your knees fall to the side. Yo voy a examinarle la vagina. I'll examine your vagina. Y luego introducir el especulo. And then I'll insert the speculum. En la vagina para abrir las paredes de la vagina. To open the walls of the vagina. Luego voy a insertar, then I'm going to insert, el cepillo cervical para recoger una muestra de células. So then I'm going to put in the cervical brush to collect some cell samples, okay? Uh, we're using introducir, insertar, they're really kind of synonymous in this way. Introducir looks like introduce, and you can think of the use of introduce like putting something inside of something else. That's how introducir is used in Spanish. It's not like to introduce people. That's presentar, present, okay? Bien. Es un examen incómodo. It's an uncomfortable exam. Usted va a sentir presión y un poquito de dolor. You'll feel pressure and a little bit of pain. Analizamos la muestra. We analyze the sample de células en el laboratorio, in the lab. So we analyze the cell sample in the lab y le avisamos si hay algún resultado anormal. And we'll let you know if there's any abnormal result dentro de within any numero of días or semanas. So within any number of days or weeks. So however your system works, right? All right, so you get the test back. And now you've got to talk through some abnormal results with your patients. Okay, so resultados alterados. Alterado is a good word for just like altered. Um, it can also mean things like drunk or drugged or whatever, but in this context, uh, resultados alterados would just be sort of off or um, a nor a atypical results, right? Um, okay, bien. So let's just talk in general terms about resultados alterados. Okay, hay un rango de salud celular. There's a range of cell health, let's say. Um, hay células normales, so there's normal cells. Y después hay células fuera de lo normal. And there's cells that are out of the norm, right? And within that range of células fuera de lo normal, tenemos cambios no determinados. Uh, es imposible saber. We just don't know. Uh, there, there are changes, but eh, no sabemos exactamente, right? Hay células de bajo riesgo de cáncer. So there's cells that are low cancer risk. Hay células de alto riesgo de cáncer. Hay células precancerosas. And then hay cáncer. 
Okay, so talking through the specifics of resultados anormales, there's some crazy vocabulario here uh, in English, actually. So let's start with this. We got this. So we're talking about squamous cells, right? Atypical squamous cells, unspecified significance. You guys are really going to test me on some of this because yo no soy doctor, yo soy profesor de español. Okay. All right, so atypical squamous cells. Cambios, let's describe it. That'd be better than finding a perfect translation for it because no one really knows, right? If you're not you. Cambios en las células del cuello uterino. So changes in the cervical cells. Indican la presencia de VPH. So they kind of indicate uh, the presence of HPV. Pueden ser células precancerosas. They could be precancerous cells. Necesitamos hacer una prueba de VPH. We need to do an HPV test. <clears throat> All right, so these are some sort of squamous intra-something lesions, right? I remember it starts with an I have intra-epithelial. Anyway, um, you know. Áreas de tejidos anormales. These are areas of abnormal tissue. Son lesiones, uh, lesions que pueden llegar a ser cancerosos, that can become cancerous. Algunas de esas lesiones se resuelven. Some of these lesions resolve on their own, pero otros necesitan quitarse. Others need to be taken out para prevenir cancer, to prevent cancer. Necesitamos hacer una prueba de VPH y una colposcopia. We need to uh, do a HPV test and a colposcopy. Okay, now, el colposcopio, previous, in one of the previous slides, was the instrument La colposcopia is the procedure, okay? So L versus la. Uh, one's the instrument, the other is the name of the procedure. All right, more atypical squamous cells. Células anormales en el cuello uterino. They're still células anormales. Pueden llegar a ser cancerosas. They can become cancerosas. Okay, up here we used cancerosos, and now we're using cancerosas. Why the change? Well, it's because canceroso, cancerosa is an adjective. It's describing a noun. So what are the noun, what's the noun we're describing here? Cancerosos. Tejidos. Los tejidos cancerosos. Now, what's cancerosas that we're describing? Células anormales. Las células. So canceroso, cancerosa, it's just going to depend on what you're talking about. Tissue, tejidos, or células, uh, cells. Okay. Okay, AGC, this is uh, atypical glandular cells, okay? Estas células glandulares en el cuello uterino pueden indicar precancer en el útero o en el cuello uterino. So these, a, these glandular cells on the cervix or in the cervix could indicate precancer in the uterus or precancer in the cervix. Necesitamos hacer un raspado endocervical. Un raspado endocervical. So um, this is the, this is where the, you, that, that test that gets the cells inside the canal of the uterus. Un raspado endocervical. I can't remember if that's maybe a curatage. You know, I don't. I don't have the right English. But raspado endocervical. It's where you're doing that scraping inside the cervix. Para sacar más muestras, to take more samples de tejido, more tissue samples del cuello uterino of the cervix y también tomar muestras del endometrio. And then also take some samples of the uh, endometrium. All right, and then of course, cancer, another resultado anormal. Hay células cancerosas en el cuello uterino. There are cancerous cells on your cervix. En este momento, at this time, necesitamos determinar y determine el mejor tratamiento. Leap, cirugía, radioterapia, quimioterapia. So leap, surgery, um, radiology, like radiotherapy, um, and quimioterapia or chemotherapy, right? Okay, so those are some resultados anormales. Let's take a look at describing una colposcopia. Uh, if you have to talk about the colposcopia, uh, that um, more in-depth look at the uh, cervix, here we go. La colposcopia es una prueba para detectar cáncer eh, del cuello uterino. So it's a test to detect cancer in the cervix. 
es como un par de binoculares con una luz brillante. It's like a pair of binoculars with a bright light. Permite ver muy de cerca su cuello uterino. It allows us to see very closely uh, your cervix. Usamos un especulo, we use a speculum, para abrir la vagina igual como usamos en el examen de Papa Nicolau. So we use the speculum to open the vagina just like we do in the pap. Pero la corposcopia, but the, uh, the corposcopia no toca ni entra su vagina. But it doesn't touch, the colposcopy doesn't touch nor enter your vagina. Okay? Si es necesario sacar una muestra de tejido para biopsia, if it's necessary to take a tissue sample for biopsy, usted sentirá presión, you'll feel pressure, y un poquito de dolor and a little pain mientras recogemos la muestra while we're taking the sample. Okay. All right, that's a lot of vocabulario, a lot of frases. You're going to want to make sure you download the notes so you've got all of this with you, and you probably have other vocabulario you might want to uh, investigate, look up, post in the comments, etc. But for now, let's let me guide you with some conversación with a practice partner. All right, so para conversar, take a few minutes to explain what a pap test is and why it's important. Answer your patient's questions about the test. So you're going to you're going to pair up with a friend who's also working on their Spanish and uh, role play, maybe, explaining and answering their questions about the test. Talk through the steps of the pap smear now as if you're performing it. Try to politely integrate the command tense. So in the fall, we did a series on verbs, right? Um, and so find the command tense. Uh, in fact, I'll link to it. Uh, in the blog post here. I'll link down to it. Head over to the command tense if you need to review that. But try integrating the command tense into your instructions of walking through the steps. Put on this gown, lay down on the table, put your feet in the, put your feet, <laughs> your feet, put your feet in the footrest, etc. All right, so now your patient needs a colposcopy. Explain to her why, what to expect, how to prepare for it, and then talk through the procedure, okay? Same by using commands, etc. And then finally, share abnormal results with your patient. Explain the possibilities and next steps for her, okay? All right, so share all that and explain the possibilities and next steps. Great. All right, preguntas? If you have questions, go ahead and post them below in the comments section and we'll be happy to answer them for you. And if you need a conversation partner, head over to the Learning Medical Spanish Facebook group. Just go to Facebook, Learning Medical Spanish, and the group will pop up. Get in there, post your uh, questions, say, hey, I'm looking for a partner who wants to practice some women's health conversations with me. All right? Muy bien, amigos. Gracias por aprender español conmigo. Juntos mejoramos comunidades. Together, we really are improving communities. So, para más español, head over to the website, commongroundinternational.com, if you're not there already. And if you would like to take a medical Spanish terminology test, head over to Certified Spanish, create your free account, and you can take as many uh, free medical Spanish terminology tests as you'd like. Okay, amigos. Que tengas muy buen fin de semana. Nos vemos la próxima semana. Chao.